let's try cyanide anion. Let's try to do the molecular orbital diagram for a cyanide anion. All right, so now it looks like we're doing a lot of things that are pretty similar to at least question 12 here. So question 12, they had NO and NO plus. We just talked about that. It's got cyanide ions. So this looks like what she wants you to know. That's right. In this case, it seems very clear that we should use the pattern for carbons and nitrogens because they're from they're both on the same side of the screen. Yeah. So a neutral, you might start with a neutral carbon and a neutral nitrogen. A neutral nitrogen would have seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a neutral carbon would have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But since this has a negative charge, oh. Um, so should I be adding or taking away an electron? Adding. Oh, oops. All right. <laughs> It's yes. a good thing we do it over this example. Okay. So there's different types of ionization, right? There's different types of ionization. Um, this has a negative charge, so you should have an extra electron. Uh, and uh, where should you put that extra electron? I don't know if it makes a big difference, but I guess we might as well put it over here on the carbon side and make these more symmetrical with each other. So I'll put the extra electron here on the carbon side. All right. So it looks like maybe you guys have taken away the electron to start with. Yeah. Okay. So uh, change your picture. What's our total number of electrons here? 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Uh, so uh, paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Diamagnetic. There's no unpaired electrons. Um, and what numbers can I plug in here? Two, 
and four. So what do we get as the bond order? And it might be interesting to draw the Lewis structure of cyanide. The Lewis structure for cyanide is triple bonded. So this is a case where the two theories are giving us the same answer. So it looks like it's easy to make some careless mistakes here when counting the number of electrons. Maybe the best thing is start by writing down the electrons you would have if everybody is neutral. Then if you have an ion, you need to ask, should I be adding or taking away an electron? Well, positive ions, you take, have one fewer electron. But negative, you have one more. Of course, the fact that this was negative doesn't mean that we added an electron to both atoms. It only has a negative one charge. So we only added one electron. Once again, if they only asked you for the bond order, you could have totally left out this bottom portion, because this is just for the core electrons. Or if they only ask you whether it's diamagnetic or paramagnetic, you can totally leave out this bottom portion. But then, of course, you'd have to count a different number. Then you would be counting the number of valence electrons, not the total number of electrons. That just comes from your column. A neutral co carbon has four valence electrons, and a neutral nitrogen has five valence electrons, because they're in the fourth and fifth columns. But I'm still doing this the way it was uh, in your lecture notes. Uh, but the core electrons never are going to affect the bond order, or whether it's para or diamagnetic. So there's an argument for leaving those out. I noticed previously that sometimes uh, you were making the mistake of drawing three dashes next to each other. I just kind of noticed maybe why that is. It's because in a, in a free atom, we do have three dashes next to each other. So a free atom does have three p orbitals of equal energy. But once we form the molecular orbitals, we only ever have two orbitals of equal energy, the two pi's. Mm -hmm. The other p orbital is going into making a sigma bond. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.